everyone, so today I want to chat with you about hypoglycemic attacks and my experience with them and um, the different stories that I have. I've had quite a few of them actually in comparison to some people that I know. Some people I know that have been diabetic for a long time have had none and some people have had a lot more than me and so I think it just depends on your lifestyle and your personality and your own uh, tolerance to different things like exercise and eating and uh, things like that. So first things first, my first ever hypo, severe hypo was when I was about 13. So I was diagnosed when I was 11. A couple of years later, I had a hypo in the middle of the night, which is I think every diabetic's kind of worst nightmare that will happen in the middle of the night. It can really easily happen in the middle of the night. And I think it happens to quite a lot of people simply because uh, you're asleep. So <laughs> your body's not necessarily going to know, and especially if you're in a very heavy sleep, your body's not necessarily going to alert you to the fact that your sugar level's plummeting. Again, with this, everybody is different. It's only ever happened to me once, actually, in the middle of the night. The rest of them were in the daytime, which actually almost in itself is slightly more worrying. So anyway, I was 13, it was the middle of the night, and all I remember is waking up, being like absolutely sweaty. I'd wet the bed as well, just because my body had lost control of everything. So like mum, bless her, she looked so terrified and so did my older brother. And who was there and I was just, mum put me in a bath, just cleaned me up and got me back into bed. And I don't think we knew like quite, you know, I was too young in a sense really to kind of analyse why it happened at that time. Um, just that it had dropped and I always used to have a banana before bed so I don't know I must have done some kind of vigorous exercise that day and not really noticed. Anyway so that was time number one. Time number two was a whole bunch of years later so I just got married, I just moved house, I just like my whole life had changed. It was like I think it was like two months after I got married so I was 25 and I had decided to go for a walk to Lidl's early in the morning to get some much needed shopping for that evening. And then I basically, all I remember doing was, I remember walking into Lidl's, but then I just remember waking up on the floor next to the freezers. And I couldn't remember how I'd got from the door, <laughs> from the inside, like the door to the freezer section. And I don't really remember what happened. I just remember kind of waking up on the floor and it all gets a bit blurry around that point. I don't even really remember what happened from that point until I got into um, the ambulance. But anyway, there was an ambulance and they took me to hospital. I remember eating a sandwich. I remember being very excited that I got a free sandwich from Lidl's. And <laughs> I don't know, it was kind of embarrassing. I basically, what I'd done is I'd injected for my breakfast, thought, oh, it would take me 20 minutes to go to Lidl's and, and do something. And then came, and then thought I'd make it back in time. But my sugar level basically just plummeted, which um, sugar levels in the morning can be so unpredictable, but I've since learnt that my sugar level does that quite a lot in the morning sometimes. It just goes through a period where it'll just plummet loads in the morning. Sometimes it goes through a period where it goes really high in the morning and it's really difficult to tell. That was my sort of second time. I just remember drinking a lot of Coca-Cola in the hospital whilst I was in the emergency section and my husband coming in and going totally mad at the fact I had this, I had like a full litre bottle of Coke, just so many, so, well, so much sugar in it. Ridiculous. I didn't need more sugar at that point because my sugar level had come back up, but I think I was just thirsty and the nurses gave it to me and I was like, anyway. So husband got me out of there, emergency department weren't doing a fantastic job at that point. Then the next uh, time, I basically, well the next two times were kind of similar. They were in the morning, not as early as when I had gone to Lidl's that time, but they were in the morning and I would I think the second time possibly was a similar thing in that I'd injected, thought I'd waited enough time, like I thought I hadn't waited too much time, started to eat my breakfast, was probably eating it a bit too slowly. Anyway, so I was by myself, in the house and I woke up underneath my kitchen table and I had bruises like all around, like, no that wasn't the time I woke up with bruises around my eyes. 
Oh, anyway, I woke up underneath the table and I was like looking up going, where the heck am I? Because <laughs> I could see it was underneath the table and you never go under the table, so that's really weird. Anyway, I was terrified and I called my husband. I was like, um, I think I've just had a low because <laughs> under the table. And I praise God every time I wake up from a low like that because like I was by myself and like the worst thing could have happened. Like I could not have woken up. Could definitely have happened um and that's i'm just incredibly amazed that i woke up and really really grateful this the second time was or the fourth time was i woke up i don't even really remember what happened before then it's all a massive blur that whole morning basically got erased from my memory i woke up in my bed and I had like a wallop on my head where I'd clearly, I'd clearly been like writhing around or something and whacked it on the sideboard. And I had huge bruises under my eyes. So I must've been like doing that or something. I don't really know. Thankfully I was in the bed. So for the most part I was kind of safe anyway. And I woke up there and I was like, what on earth have I just like woken up late? And then I looked at my face and I looked at the time and I think that's the time I was like really late for work. I had to call in and go like, yeah, I'm like not coming in today. I've just such a major hypo. So that was another weird one. I, it obviously seems to happen a lot to me in the morning, but the last one, the last time it happened was a couple of years ago before I got pregnant. It was at my grandparents' house. We had gone for a walk. It was really like in the winter. We'd gone for a walk, come back and started to drink alcohol we had some rice wine all nice and heated up and i had injected for my dinner and basically thought we were eating straight away and had rice wine after a long walk anyway and i just kind of again i don't i remember sort of drinking the rice wine and I just don't remember anything after that. I didn't even have loads. It's not like I was sort of like knocking them back. I think I just had like a small thing, but it must have just been just like enough to like drop my level, like nobody's business. So I ended up on the floor and I remember waking up uh, to the paramedic who, and I remember thinking like, have I been, I've been out for so long. It's taken like, like, there's been enough time for a paramedic to get here. And I had like jam in my, uh, like marmalade in my hair because it's what my husband found something to put on it. Terrified the living day out of my husband who'd never seen that happen before. Like obviously he'd been around like it happened three times before, or, like in the area, but not actually right next to it happening. And my grandparents absolutely terrified them. I mean, I don't know what I was like. I must've been actually like having a fit. And they must have had a fit every single time, but just not, you're not really aware of it. And I think quite often, like, I hit my head and lose my memory. Anyway, I don't want to say those things to scare you if you are diabetic or you know someone that's diabetic. I just kind of want to let people know some different stories and also, I guess, in some way prevent it happening just to know that, like, it's good sometimes to pre-bolus. So, like, bolus 20 minutes before if, the circumstances are right. So like, you know, you're gonna eat something really fast carb in 10 minutes exactly, and you haven't been exercising. But for me, if I've done any exercise or it's really slow release carbs, just like it's, well, pretty much it's just a no-go area for me now. I can't, I can't risk it having a small child around. Mostly it's just me and my little son at the minute and I cannot risk that happening. And I just, like I say, I'm so thankful every time I wake up from one of these attacks and I'm just so blessed that even though I've had five hypos, every time I've woken up and it's not been in a life-threatening situation where uh, I could have actually died, you know, like, like that famous scene where Juliet Roberts is in the water. So, and I always check my sugar level before I go in a bath, <laughs> always, without fail. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'd love it if you'd share your stories so this could be a place where people can share all of their different hypo stories so we can just encourage each other as well as learn from each other. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a really great, very safe, perfect sugar level day. <laughs> Bye.